Hello students. So in the last class we have studied about the we are studying about the extraction of the metal from its ore, right? So we have studied that there are three main steps involved in that. So the first step is concentration of the ore. That means removal of the gang particles. What is gang? Impurity is present in the ore. So removal of the gang particles from the ore. That is what we are doing in the concentration of the ore. We have discussed what are the main methods that we are using for the concentration of the ore. What are they? First one is hydraulic washing, magnetic separation, froth flotation method and leaching also. Okay. All these four methods are really important. Mainly that froth flotation method. Froth flotation method, a uh, lot of questions have been asked from that part. Right, uh, the uh, role of collectors, what are collectors, give their examples, stabilizers, give their examples, right, lot of uh, depressants, what are depressants used over there, lot of questions are asked from that particular part. Then the leaching also, leaching is also really important, I have given the previously asked the questions on that day itself, so go through it, lot of questions have been asked from that particular part. So in this session today we are going to study about the second type that is second step so we have discussed about the concentration of the ore the second step is the extraction of the metal from the concentrated ore now our ore is you know, free of impurities from that concentrated ore from that pure ore we need to extract out our metal so what are the steps involved in it what are the main uh, steps that is involved in the extraction of metal from its ore that all things that we will discuss today. Okay. So again when we are discussing about the extraction of the metal. Uh, thermodynamic principles are also coming. Because when a particular reaction is going on. Extraction involves a lot of chemical reactions. So we have studied that thermodynamics plays an important role. And the feasibility of a particular chemical reaction. Right. Whether a chemical reaction is possible or not. Can be explained by the thermodynamic principles. So that also we will discuss today thermodynamic principles involved in it. So listen carefully, read your textbook properly and try to solve as many previously asked questions as you can. Then if you are having any doubts, please contact me also. Okay. So we have studied about the concentration of the ore. So first step is over. Our ore is free from the impurity. So the next step in the metallurgy is the extraction of metal extraction of metal from metal from concentrated ore so now in the first step our ore has been concentrated now from that concentrated ore we need to extract out the metal okay so this step there is extraction of metal from the concentrated ore involves two steps so the first step is conversion to oxide conversion to oxide and the second the second step is reduction reduction of oxide reduction of oxide to metal okay so the extraction of metal from concentrated ore it involves two steps so first step is conversion to oxide. So conversion of the concentrated ore to its oxide form. And the second step is that particular oxide, the metal in the oxide form should be undergo reduction such that we will get our metal. Okay. So the first step is conversion to oxide and the second step is reduction of oxide to metal. So we can start with the first one that is conversion of concentrated ore to the oxide form. So the first step is conversion to oxide form. So we need to convert, we need to convert the concentrated ore to its oxide form. So this can be accomplished by two methods. So first one is calcination. You might have studied this in your 10th standard. So the first method is calcination. The second method is roasting. 
second method is roasting so we have two methods for converting a concentrated ore to its oxide form so the first one is calcination and the second method is by roasting so calcination and roasting both involves heating both will undergo heating we are heating the concentrated ore heating means its reaction with the oxygen right so whatever that method it will be converted to its uh, no oxide form by heating so calcination normally we will be using carbonate ore normally we will be using the carbonate ore to undergo calcination okay or normally the carbonate ores will be undergoing the calcination or any volatile compounds volatile compounds any of the volatile compounds also will be undergoing calcination volatile compounds volatile compounds means that particular compound will contain any water molecules associated with it so they are volatile also so those water molecules when it is undergoing calcination it will remove their water molecules okay so carbonates of or and those compounds which are having water molecules that is water of crystallization that is associated with it that also can undergo calcination okay for example zinc carbonate zn-zo3 zinc carbonate zinc carbonate zinc, zinc carbonate is an ore of zinc zinc carbonate is ore of zinc we call it as a calamine so calamine is the one ore of the zinc calamine's chemical formula is zn-co3 so zn-co3 so this can undergo heating so we are heating it so heating we are representing as a delta heating it so how we are heating it means with limited supply of air with limited supply of air if we are heating it so what will happen means when we are heating it certain co3 will decompose to form zinc oxide and carbon dioxide okay so we got zinc in the form of oxide right zinc oxide is formed okay like in the next example suppose there is an ore with the calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate so this ore contains calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate together so again both of them are in this carbonate form so what we will do we will heat it with a limited supply of air so it will undergo calcination so what all will be formed over here calcium oxide will be formed plus magnesium oxide will be formed over here plus carbon dioxide will be removed out the so carbon dioxide will be removed out again our carbonate ore has changed into its oxide form okay so again i told you volatile compounds those compounds which are volatile also can undergo calcination so normally those compounds which have the water of crystallization for example the fe2o3 xh2 what is this xh2 indicates it has water of crystallization it has some molecule of water associated with it so when it undergo calcination okay heating with a limited supply of air so what will happen this water of crystallization will get removed out that means it will get Fe2O3 plus XH2O. <coughs> okay, so it will got Fe2O3 XH2O when it is undergoing uh, calcination. The water of crystallization will be removed and we will get our iron in this oxide form. So this is what it is undergoing under calcination. So calcination is a method for converting our concentrated ore into its oxide form. Okay. So the next one is roasting. So roasting also involves heating, but it with the regular supply of air. With the regular supply of air. then only we can undergo roasting so roasting is done using the regular supply of air so we have to heat this ore with a very large amount of air in it so this normally we will be taking place we, we need to heat it very thoroughly we normally we will heat it in a furnace furnace we will be using it in a furnace 
again we will be using that particular furnace we call it as the reverberatory furnace reverberatory furnace reverberatory furnace so reverberatory furnace is the special type of furnace for heating we are heating it very thoroughly that much of heat energy should be uh, regular supply of that much of air also should be there and we need to heat it very thoroughly so what will happen we are doing it in a reverberatory furnace okay then this ore should be heated with the regular supply of air in a furnace in the reverberatory furnace at a temperature below the melting point of that particular metal okay so normally sulfide ores are undergoing sulfide ores will undergo roasting normally we will be doing roasting for the conversion of sulfide ores for the conversion of sulfide ores into its oxide form okay so now we can look at the examples okay so the first one is zinc sulfide again another ore of zinc is zinc sulfide so what will be we are heating with the regular supply of air right so what will happen we need to add oxygen over here so we are heating with the large supply of air so what will happen so it will produce zinc oxide and so2 gas will be removed out and this so2 gas will be removed out okay again lead sulfide pbs pbs is an another example pbs again pbs can undergo roasting it will heated with the regular supply of air again what will happen pbo and so2 will be produced over here Okay. Again, the next example is copper sulfide Cu two S. Cu two S can undergo roasting. Can heat with the regular supply of air. Again, what will happen? Copper oxide Cu two O and SO two gas will be evolved out. Okay. So this is how the conversion of oxide is taking place. Okay. So what what is the need of converting a concentrated ore into the oxide form is that if that particular metal is in its oxide form then we can easily extract out the metal from it so if it is in the oxide form if it is in the oxide form what will happen means we can undergo reduction just by doing the reduction what will happen we will get our metal out right so that is why we are converting all the ores into its oxide form first then what we can do then we can undergo reduction then after doing the reduction what will happen we will get our metal out we know that when doing the reduction that oxygen so whatever that metal for example mxoy this is a particular metal metal oxide m is the metal and oxygen is the so metal oxide so this oxide when it is undergoing reduction what will happen this oxygen will get removed out right so we will get our metal out so that is why we are doing this in two steps so conversion to oxide first next is reduction of oxide to the metal so conversion of oxide conversion to oxide involves two process so first one is calcination and the second one is roasting calcination is heating the ore with the limited supply of air while roasting is heating the ore with the regular supply of air normally carbonates ores and those compounds which are having water molecules associated with it that are volatile compounds will be undergoing calcination roasting is done by the sulfide ores so when you're doing the calcination what will happen we have to heat it with the regular supply of air not limited supply of air and roasting we are doing with the high la la supply of air itself okay so i hope you have understood the conversion to oxide okay so after the oxidation of the concentrated ore the second step involved is the reduction so the reduction of the metal oxide to the metal so that is the second step involved in the extraction of metal from the concentrated ore so we have seen that in the first step it is the conversion of the concentrated ore into its oxide form so the second step is that oxide form that metal oxide what we will do we will do the reduction when a metal oxide is undergoing reduction what will happen 
we will get our metal back so here what is happening means here the reduction reaction is undergoing for example we can represent this equation as we know that a particular metal mx o y let it be this is a metal oxide capital letter m is the metal it is combining with the oxygen so that metal in its oxide form it will react with it will react with any of the reducing agent so we know that for the reduction to takes place a reducing agent is needed a reducing agent is needed so it will react with an reducing agent to give off what will we will get our metal or we will get our metal that is xm plus then what will happen this reducing agent will undergo oxidation right so reducing agent will undergo oxidation we know that reducing agent are those common those substances which will help for the reduction so will help for the reduction and it will undergo oxidation itself so that point should be clear because when you study further that point should be there in your mind so for the reduction a reducing agent is needed that reducing agent what is the role of that reducing agent it will undergo oxidation how it will undergo oxidation it will take the oxygen from the metal oxide it will combine with the oxygen in the metal oxide and will help in the reduction it will form co why this car suppose this is a carbon that we used over here carbon is a very good reducing agent right so that carbon will react with the oxygen present over here and will form the carbon monoxide so this is how the reduction is taking place and we will get our metal out also okay so reduction of metal oxide to the corresponding metal so here the reduction is undergoing so that particular metal in its oxide form will be reacted with the reducing agent so this reducing agent will undergo oxidation itself by taking the oxygen from the metal and it will form the carbon monoxide in this case it is carbon monoxide and we will get back our metal okay so this is this reduction is undergoing with the help of a reducing agent but by simply taking a reducing agent we cannot undergo the reduction so here the reduction is taking place with the help of temperature also so temperature is needed however we need to heat it we need to heat it so this is a thermal reduction is undergoing thermal reduction that means it should be heated also so a particular temperature is needed for this reduction to undergo okay so a reducing agent is needed and the heating also should be done so what will happen metal oxide will be changed into the metal okay so here two important things that we said is that reduction for the reduction to undergo a reducing agent is needed and we need to heat it also and these two which reducing agent that we need to give or what is the temperature range at what temperature we need to heat it so these two questions will be arised over here right we are told that a reducing agent is needed over here so which reducing agent that we need to use or what is the temperature range here we are told that it is a thermal reduction heating is needed so what is the temperature that is needed for this reduction to undergo so this is the next question so for all these things to answer it was put forward by a scientist known as h j t ellingham so h j t ellingham has put forward a graph he has put forward a graph to explain about which reducing agent and which temperature range is needed for a particular reaction to undergo so he has plotted a graph to explain about all these things so that particular graph we call it as the ellingham diagram so we are going to study about the ellingham diagram 